Howdy, guys, and welcome to night 17 of Big Brother season 23, and welcome to Cliff Notes from outside the Big Brother house. I hope you all are enjoying your weekend. House guests have certainly been busy. Before we talk about overnight feeds, let's talk a little bit about what happened yesterday. Uh, normally, we just have the nominations, but now with the wild card, we got a little bit busier Fridays that take place every week. So with that in mind, uh, we did have the wild card competition yesterday. The players were Brittany, Derek X, and Tiffany. Now, it sounds like Brittany volunteered to play, which was smart. And Derek F was pushing for her to play this week so he can play next week. Uh, Derek X playing, not sure him versus Whitney were the two choices. I, I'm not sure if that was a random draw or, or I don't, did Whitney feel safe with Xavier on the block as HOH? I kind of don't see that. So I'm assuming random draw, but I don't know. And then finally we had Tiffany playing the other choice on that team. It would have been Claire. I'm assuming a random draw for those two. I'm not sure that Tiffany would have on her own felt threatened enough to, to volunteer to play this week. So I assume that's a random draw, but not sure. But then I, Brittany, Derek X, and Tiffany are the three playing the wild card competition. Sounds like the competition involved balancing uh, on a beam of some sort, maybe something with numbers trying to add up a certain number. Uh, not sure. The main takeaway, however, was that it sounds like Derek X and Tiffany were, were maybe working together a little bit uh, and to take out Brittany. And the other, and the big takeaway the winner of the wild card competition, Tiffany. Tiffany wins the, the competition. Congratulations to Tiffany. But it doesn't really matter. Well, I guess it does matter. Uh, whatever the twist that went along with it was, and we don't know yet. We'll find out on Sunday. Uh, it must have not been anything too great because Tiffany said, nah, I, I'm good. I'm turning it down. So Tiffany rejects the power. She rejects the safety that the wild card would have prevented. Are, are, are allowed. Uh, now, I say it doesn't matter from Tiffany's standpoint, it doesn't, but uh, keeping that power away from Brittany is certainly certainly huge for, for one half of the house. So uh, it did matter in that regard. So Brittany is not safe. Tiffany is not safe. No, no one is safe as a result of the wild card competition. Uh, now, I got to say, these producers have to hate. We heard Julie Chen saying, we're going to be making offers that you can't refuse. Well, Frenchie refused his offer. Uh, so far, we've had two of the three wild card competitions. Uh, the offers have, have been refused as well. Uh, and, and really, wild card competition one, I don't remember there was a, there was a punishment. Yeah, just got to spin the wheel to, to save uh, an extra person as well. So Christian and Xavier were saved. So anyway, producers probably not real happy that none of these offers are being taken up on. Uh, later in the day, we did have the nomination ceremony. Not a huge surprise. Everyone's been talking about Brent going on the block. And yes, indeed, Brent did go on the block. Uh, the one area that we weren't 100% on was who was going up alongside Brent. Was it going to be Brittany? Was it going to be Whitney? Well, as it turns out, uh, Brittany, Brittany is up on the block next to, to Brent. Uh, second week in a row for Brittany. Uh, we're going to hear another week of her practicing her eviction speeches and such. Uh, unless she wins veto today. And then she won't be so worried about eviction speeches. But uh, yeah, Brittany was not real happy being up on the block for second week. Uh, but again, Brent is the main target this week, at least for now. We'll see if that changes. Uh, so with that, let's go on to the overnight feeds. Talk about some of what happened uh, overnight. Brent's upset. Uh, he's saying, he's, he's talking to Xavier, saying, look, I, I'm not pawn material. What's going on here? I, why would you put me up uh, as a pawn? And Xavier said, no, that, that's really it. I, I just want you up there as a pawn. Uh, later, Xavier tells Kylan and Claire, says, look, Brent recognizes, thinks he's a target, but maybe, uh, but I don't know that he knows that he's the primary target. And that, that may be true, although I think Brent has a, a, a suspicion that that absolutely is the case. Uh, Xavier is talking to Christian and Alyssa and saying, look, Brent's upset because he wanted, he expected the two nominees to be people that weren't part of the Slaughterhouse Alliance. Well, yeah, the, the Slaughterhouse, I, I'm not assuming it's as solid an alliance that it's ever been that solid of an alliance. But Brent apparently has a little more faith in the Slaughterhouse than, than most people do in the house. And so he was upset. He was thinking that his membership in the slaughterhouse would protect him with, with Xavier. Obviously, that's not the case. Brent doesn't realize a whole lot of people in this house, slaughterhouse and not, have all turned on Brent. Uh, he, he's not nearly as safe as, as he still, I think, thinks he is. Uh, Brent is telling his Aces teammates uh, that there are plenty of other people that Xavier could have put up as a pawn, and it just doesn't make sense as a pawn. 
If only Brent knew that his own teammates threw the HOH competition just to make sure Brent wasn't safe this week, that he could go up on the block. He's going to have a quite a, quite a shock somewhere down the road when he realizes uh, how the house has turned against him. Uh, Brent is telling Alyssa, who he thinks he has a final two alliance with, uh, that before the noms, he told Xavier that if he went on the block, it would mean war. And he later mentioned that while he's talking to, to his teammates uh, later on in the evening saying, yeah, I'm going after all of them. I, this is, uh, he knew what I, he was doing when he, when he put me on the block. So it, it's all at war at this point in time. Now, Alyssa is trying to convince Brent that, look, Xavier just used you as a pawn because he doesn't want Derek X to come in and win this veto again and, and mess everything up and, and all that. So he puts you on the pawn, uh, Brent, just so that you can go in, play veto. You're a strong player. Win the veto. That's, that's all Xavier's looking at. Kind of recollections of, of some of the, the reasoning we heard from Frenchie week one when he put Kylan in the box. Said, ah, I just want to put you up there. Because it's going to help when you can win the veto. It's, it's good for your game. Well, I'm not sure Brent buys it any more uh, than Kylan did in, in week one. But that's what Alyssa's trying to sell to, uh, uh, to Brent. Uh, Alyssa also is saying that, look, Brent, uh, me, Christian, Sarah, Beth, we got you. You're, you're good. We, we've got your back. Eh, not so much. Uh, here's the thing. I, I mentioned before, Brent, uh, Xavier's saying that Brent thinks he's a target, but not the main target. Uh, Brent's not buying that, but I really don't know that, that Brent realizes that he doesn't have the numbers in the house that I, I think Brent's thinking, yeah, I'm a possibility and all that, but I got the people to protect me that are behind me, just maintain the relationships and I'll be good. Whoever I'm against. I just don't think he's, he's really picking up on the picture of how things have changed, uh, over this past week or two, uh, Maybe he should, as much as he's talked about threats with the Women's Alliance and everything. I, there's a lot of people for a lot of reasons that should be targeting Brent, and he's just not picking up on that. Uh, meanwhile, the sh- non-showmance between Christian and Alyssa. Yeah, yeah, non-showmance. Yeah, we, we haven't been buying that forever, guys. And sure enough, that non-showmance involved a makeout session up in the HOH room. Uh, later, there was a little, little making out uh, uh, later on in the evening as well. Uh, but yeah, it starts off in the, well, I didn't start off. I think it's been happening for a while. But, but we see a little makeout session in the HOH room bed. And unfortunately for Christian and Alyssa, uh, Xavier comes up and, and he notices a little makeout session going on as well. And he calls them out on it. The cat's out of the bag. Uh, I don't know that it really matters whether they wanted to call it a showmance or not. People knew that Christian and Alyssa are attached to the hip and would be watching out for each other. Uh, we've already heard conversations saying, ah, if you take out Alyssa, you're going to have Christian, a scorned man. He's going to be upset and all that. Everyone always knows they're a tight deal. So whether it's a showmance or not, does it matter? Yeah, I don't know if it matters, but the cat is out of the bag. Uh, now, Christian and Alyssa were trying to, to tone down their hanging out and their, their coupling up together and all that. I'm not sure that's the right word, but you know what I mean. Uh, will will them being the only certified showmance in, in the house, is that going to put bigger targets on their backs going forward? I, I think it could. Uh, unlike other seasons where you've got a lot of showmances, eh, tell me about it. But, uh, you yeah, know, this season we really just have one big one that, that everyone is focused on. Uh, so I, I think it could put a little big target, bigger target on their back. If nothing else, it creates just another excuse of why you could put one or the other on the block on down the road. We've heard that discussed by multiple people uh, talking about targeting Christian and, or, or maybe a little more Alyssa. This is just one more reason they can throw out there. Hey, y'all were in a showman. So we had to break you up. It's nothing personal. We just had to break you up. So yeah, I think they have to be careful with this, but hey, they, they got caught and it is what it is. They should have known better, right? Uh, Derek F and Kylan are talking. Derek F is saying that, that after Brent, Two girls have to go next. Uh, he's talking about how upset Aza is that, that Brittany was targeted again. And Derek F. also is, is saying that, look, uh, Kylan, Aza uh, doesn't know about the slaughterhouse uh, and therefore doesn't realize that Whitney is, is protected because she's part of that. She couldn't get put up. Now, am I discounting the slaughterhouse alliance too much? I said earlier, I thought it was a non-alliance. It, it was never really a solid alliance and even more so with Frenchie gone. I just assume the slaughterhouse is, is a bit of a joke at this point in time, but we've got Brent believing in it. And, and now we've got Derek F saying, hey, we couldn't put Brittany, uh, uh, Whitney up because she's part of the slaughterhouse. So maybe there's still some remnants, still some people watching out for each other uh, a little bit. 
Uh, but on the other hand, we also have Derek F. mentioning to Kyle and saying, hey, I may put Whitney up if I get HOH. So, yeah, Slaughterhouse or not, Whitney's not that protected uh, from from being nominated. But anyway, so, so yeah, Aza's a little upset. She feels like the, the team Jokers has continually got, gotten targeted. And yet again, Brittany on the block for the second week in a row, and, and Oz is taking it uh, somewhat personally uh, that, that her team's getting attacked. Uh, at that point, Oz walks in, Kylan leaves. Uh, Oz suggests that Derek F says, look, Kylan, Tiffany, and Derek X, they're working together. Uh, and Derek F kind of says, girl, what, what are you talking about? Well, yeah, they are working together. They're all part of the royal family, which Derek F and Oz aren't a part of. So it's not just the three of them. It's a much bigger group that's working together. But yes, Oz has identified that the Kylan, Tiffany, and, and Derek X, a little bit tighter than, than maybe Derek F is willing to acknowledge. Uh, later, we've got Oz and Derek F talking, and Oz is warning Derek uh, F saying, look, Brent's not buying this deception plan of Xavier's. He knows he knows that he's a target. It's not, you know, and I think Frenchie had told him, be warned, you're going to be targeted by, by the house. So she's saying, eh, Brent's smarter than that. He's not, not buying it. Uh, she's really upset, uh, again, that Brittany uh, and Team Jokers keep getting nominated, as I mentioned. But Derek F. is trying to reassure her and saying, look, yeah, everyone is going after Brent. It doesn't matter whether Brittany's on the block or not, because everyone's going after Brent. Even his own teammates are going after him. And Oz is saying, yeah, I know. I know he's a big target. You don't have to explain that to me. But Brittany and us are still being targeted, and that still makes us vulnerable as, as well. Uh, Brittany comes in at this point and says, look, I talked to Kylan. I had a little conversation with him, and, and he said that if he was to get picked for veto, if he wins veto, as long as Xavier's fine with it, he's pulling me off the block. And, and she says, he told me that even if Xavier's not fine with it, he'd still consider it using me. He doesn't want me on the block, and I really – think he's sincere and you know they're targeting brent and you know all that, that we've already heard uh so she she's feeling somewhat comfortable i think because of that uh but there, there was a little caveat to to the what uh kylan said apparently kylan told her said yeah i'd love to use a veto on you but it needs to be part of a solid base a, a solid working relationship uh between the jokers and, and the queens uh, we, you know, we need to we need to partner up if i'm going to save you there there's a little payback that comes with it uh, Brittany is saying, yeah, okay, I get it. And that's fine. But she's also saying she does have some reservations working uh, with Tiffany uh, of that group of, of team Queens. Uh, that's the only thing that may make her a little cautious about working with, with Kylan and the rest of team Queens. And that's interesting. And well, I, I'm really curious to see over the next week or two, Tiffany's position in the game. Cause I think she's playing a great game, but is she overplaying a little bit? Is she getting a little attention brought to herself because she's so vocal at times? I know. We're going to find out here as we go forward. Uh, later, uh, Aza and Derek X are, are, are talking some more. Aza's upset that Derek X, uh, uh, some more, it's the first kind of confusing Derek X and Derek F. Uh, Aza and Derek X are talking. Aza's upset that Derek X apparently threw the wild card competition, helped Tiffany win, and he didn't really deny it. He says, look, yeah, I, I didn't want Brittany to win because if she had won, then she's safe from nomination and i'm afraid that xavier would go after someone from from my team aces instead so yeah i kind of didn't want Brittany to win because i'd rather have her targeted than someone from my team so i yeah i threw it uh Oz is now uh questioning why tiffany say so, okay well you know you're doing that why was tiffany going after Brittany? that doesn't make any sense why is she so opposed and derek x is saying look uh, tiffany knew i was throwing the competition so she knows i'm throwing it it makes sense that she would go after Brittany as well. So Tiffany can win the whole thing. It makes sense to me. I'm not sure Aza was really buying all of it. She still, still seemed a little concerned, a little, little upset the way the game, the wild card was played. It makes sense to me though. It truly does. All right. Another conversation, Claire, Tiffany, Kylan, the, the queen, queen team, team Queens is, is in the have not room. Tiffany is saying, all right, now okay, think about this. Tiffany is saying that she was talking to Whitney and Hannah earlier. And that Whitney said, hey, Frenchie told me that, that you're part of an all-girls alliance. Well, <laughs> she's actually part of three separate girls, uh, uh, all-girls alliances. The Jackpots with Claire and Sarah Beth and the Kingslayers with Claire, Aza, and Brittany. And the French Kisses as well. So yeah, Tiffany has, has a few connections to all-girl alliances. But 
Uh, she said, yeah, Whitney accused me, said Frenchie said that I'm part of this all girls alliance. I, I think that Whitney and was probably referencing the, the French kisses. I think that's the only one that Frenchie knew about that he would have told Whitney about. Uh, so, so Whitney mentioned that's got Tiffany spooked a little bit. Uh, and, and Tiffany says she responded by Whitney saying, look, Frenchie's alliances, they were all fake. They were all BS. That's not, it's nothing Whitney. It's something that he came up with and, now, I'm not part of any all girls alliance. I have, I'm not part of any of these alliances that Frenchie put together. Well, she's, she may have she may have a couple of alliances other than the French kisses that involve uh, all females. Uh, so she kind of, uh, you yeah, know, playing the game. Uh, Tiffany apparently then told Whitney uh, that she thought she and Brent were close and and tie with each other. And then Whitney saying, I think Whitney maybe had said something like, eh, you know, we're, we're friends, but not strategic. Nah, I know. You know, I'm, I'm ready to boot him out of the house just like everyone else. I was ready to, th- I threw the HOH. I want Brent gone. So Tiffany's kind of saying, nah, I'm sorry. I thought y'all were tighter than that. And, you know, I just assumed it and all that. Uh, she says that Whitney has talked to her about the idea that as soon as Brent's gone, she would love to work with the Queens that she'd like to see the team aces and the team Queens merge together into a big alliance, uh, isn't that the Mafia Alliance? I feel like they already have that called the Mafia Alliance, but she's suggesting a, a new alliance that's those two teams without Brent. Uh, but Whitney didn't want to name this new alliance. And for Tiffany, that's raising red flags. She's saying if she doesn't want to even name the alliance, maybe she's just out for the numbers, but she doesn't really want our support and vice versa in terms of alliance. She just wants the, the numbers, uh, but she doesn't view this as really her, her top alliance if she won't even name it. I don't know what the deal is with everyone wanting to name their alliances. I was a big proponent in the house of you don't ever name alliances because when you do, it just makes it easier for it to be exposed and talked about and everything else. But everyone likes to name their alliances inside the house. And and the fact that Whitney won't has Tiffany a a little concerned. Claire is thinking that that Whitney might start working uh, with Team Jokers if she has a chance. And she's suggesting that Whitney and Brittany should be on the block next week. Now, this is this is a smart move. Claire's got it figured out. You've got some of these guys that are a little bit concerned. Is there a girls alliance? Is there not? You know, do we need to address that? So Claire comes in and says, hey, we need to target uh, uh, Whitney and, uh, and Brittany next week. Get rid of a couple of the women uh, so that the guys feel a little more comfortable. There's not a girls alliance. Uh, just happens to be the, the two women that Claire are proposing are the two that aren't part of the, the women's alliance. So you make the guys feel a little bit better. You don't hurt the strength of the, the existing female alliance uh, whatsoever. I think that's a smart move on, on Claire's part to make that suggestion. Uh, Tiffany is saying that Whitney might want to get the, the girls together. She might try to form the girls together into an alliance. Str- said strictly for Kylan's benefit, plant some seeds, plant a little paranoia in Kylan's head to, to help push the Whitney goes next narrative uh, going forward. Kylan is saying he doesn't want the Aces or the Jokers to get HOH next week, that he's going to fight for HOH. He's not going to throw it if there's still a chance either one of those may may actually win HOH. So basically, Kylan's loyal to the royal family, the royal flush at this point in time uh, by that suggestion. Uh, Tiffany throws out an interesting idea, and I couldn't figure out how serious or not she was. She's saying, look, you know, there's the idea, maybe uh, backdoor Whitney this week and, and save Brent for next week. Brent's on everyone's target. So does it make sense that you save him knowing that you can probably get him a little bit later, go for another target this week? Yeah, perhaps, but you're always running the risk that Brent could win an HOH. He could win the uh, safety comp. You just don't know in this game. Uh, but, but it's an interesting thought that she's thrown out there. And finally, well, almost finally, we've got the team aces in the kitchen cooking. Hannah, now I, I've been cheering for Hannah. I think Hannah's playing a pretty good game. She's flying a little under the radar, not a huge target uh, with anyone, but uh, good relationships with a lot of people as well. Uh, I think she's playing a good early game. However, while they're in the kitchen, Hannah mentions that she doesn't like Hawaiian pizza and that anyone who puts ranch dressing on their pizza, uh, that they're psychotic. Hannah, I, I, I'm sorry, but I can no longer cheer for you. Uh, if you take that position on the pizzas, uh, you and Boss Hog, we're, we're going to have some. We're going to have some friction here. Uh, yeah, I, I like Hannah. I'm still cheering for her, and I think she's still do, playing a great game. But I'm not sharing my pizza with you, Hannah, because you wouldn't be eating it anyway. I love all those things. Oh, so there you go. All right, final couple of conversations. Brent is telling his teammates 
that if he got the chance as HOH, he would target Xavier and Christian. Uh, he's uh, again, he, he's declared war on Xavier. Uh, this is this is it. If he survives this week, uh, he he'll take the first shot he can at Xavier. He's not happy that he's being used. Uh, we then have a, a little soliloquy. Uh, Claire talking to the camera in a much quieter voice than, than I ever had while I was in the house. But uh, Claire is talking some strategy directly to the camera. Uh, she's saying that she wants Brent and Whitby gone, that she doesn't trust Kylan just yet. She's trying, but she doesn't trust Kylan just yet. She wants to work with Hannah, and she would like to keep Brittany and, and Aza, uh, if at all possible, that she fears Tiffany uh, because she thinks that if it came down to a final two between her and Tiffany, that Tiffany would easily defeat her in any jury vote. And I think she's probably right. Uh, so she's, as much as she likes Tiffany, she fears that she could never beat her in a final two. Keep that in mind as we go forward. You're, we're a little early for it, but you're going to get to a point where people start sending out uh, targets, not just because they represent a threat to you uh, in terms of HOH's nominations, but people will start thinking as we move a little bit later into the game, who could I handle in a final two? Who could I not? And how's that going to work? And we're going to start seeing some decisions being made over the next few weeks about who we want on jury, who we don't want on jury based on how you think they would vote. So we're getting ready to move into that early game into more of a mid game play, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so there you go, guys. Uh, today, Saturday, we're going to have the veto draw. Then we're going to have the veto competition. This is a vi- we every every week you've got someone on Big Brother saying I have to. This is the most vi- important veto competition of the year for Brittany, for Brent, uh, and, and for Whitney. It probably is a pretty important veto competition, especially for Brent. Uh, he needs to win this thing, else uh, Brent's time in the house may be somewhat shortened. Uh, but we'll find out. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk about that and everything else that happened overnight, guys. Y'all have a fantastic Saturday. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. SKD one forty three. Cheers, my friends. Bye.